The last topic that we want to go over is another way to measure average. Uh, this, this is called a geometric average. The geometric average takes into account the effects of compounding. Um, and to compute a geometric average, instead of adding up the annual returns and divide it by the number of observations, we take one plus the return and multiply it together, and then we take the teeth wood, so the number of observations, and we subtract that by one. Let's go through an example to demonstrate how to compute a geometric average. So in this example, we have five years worth of return. So to compute the geometric average, we need to take 1 plus this return. So 1 plus 0.1114 is 1.1114. Um, next year, we have 37.13%, so it's 0.3713, and that gives us 1.3713. So we do that for each return, and then we have to multiply it together. So we end up with 1.1114 times 1 plus 0.3713 times 1 plus this. And in here, the next in 1929, we have 1 plus but is a negative number so we have to subtract 0 0.0891 and that give us 0 0.9109 so we do one plus each year multiply it together and we take it to the one fifth root so i can show you how to do that um, on a calculator so one divided by five is 0.2 so it's, use, it's useful to, to first keep that in mind. And then we can multiply the rest of the numbers together. So we have 1.1114 times the next number, 1.3713. One and continue with that. So the last one is 0 0.7474. Uh, after we multiply this together, you should get 1.487. So pause the video and multiply this number together to make sure you get the same answer. Next, we're going to take this to the nth root. And in here is 1 divided by 5, which is 0 0.02. So we'll, take, so we'll do y to the x. And the root is 0 0.2. This is 1 divided by 5 that give us 1.0826. So that's this entire first half. We need to subtract one from that. So we have 1.0826, subtract one, that's 0.0826 or 8.26%. So 8.26% is the geometric average of the return over these five years. So here's, let's take a look at the average return. You'll notice that the arithmetic average return pretty much consistently is higher than the geometric average return. So the arithmetic average return is higher for large company stock and for small company stock. Um, the difference is greater the higher the risk, the higher the standard deviation for the stocks. Uh, in fact, if you look at the very low risk, um, investment such as T bill, the arithmetic average and the geometric average is exactly the same. Uh, for inflation, is very similar. So you can see the higher the risk, the greater the difference between the arithmetic average and the geometric average. And now you probably ask an important question: So which one should we use? Should we use the geometric average or should we use the arithmetic average? So first of all, uh, for most financial publications, and particularly for advertising and also um, uh, as required by law to disclose to investors, um, are arithmetic average. So when you see an average return being advertised either on a financial website or is given to you um, 
in a, in a prospective a brochure from a bank or an investment broker, those returns are typically arithmetic average. If they are giving you a geometric average return, they will make it very clear that they're giving you a geometric average. So most of the time, the information you're given is an arithmetic average. But let's say you actually have the detailed return, which is uh, easily obtained, you can get the year by year return on your own, and you want to compute the average for your own investment analysis, which one should you use? Um, basically, the arithmetic average is overly optimistic when you are investing for long term because it does not take into account compounding. On the other hand, the, the Geometric average return is overly pessimistic for short horizons. So which return, which average, which whether or not it's the arithmetic average or the geometric average you use depends on your planning horizon and the risk. Um, so if your planning horizon is 15 year or less, so if you are saving for a house or saving for college, you, you, can, you can safely use the arithmetic average. Um, if it's between 20 to 40 years, you may want to split the difference between them if you're investing in a high-risk investment. If you're investing for 40 plus years, for example, for retirement, you should do your, your retirement planning using the geometric average in your assumption. So this gives you an overview on the, his, the historic return and the different sample statistics that we can use to help us understand the relationship between risk and return.